This is the heat of fusion and heat of vaporization of water lab, where we're going to try to find the heat of fusion. That's the amount of energy it takes for uh, ice to change to a liquid. And the heat of vaporization, which is the amount of energy it takes for liquid water to change to water vapor. Uh, this is the heating curve for water. And what it shows is as energy is applied, it shows how the temperature is affected. So if you have some ice below zero degrees and you add heat to it, it'll first warm the ice. And then after the ice has been warmed to the melting point, it'll change from a solid to a liquid. The amount of energy that it takes to change from a solid to a liquid is called the heat of fusion. And then once it's all changed to a liquid and you continue to apply heat, it will change from a liquid at a low temperature to a liquid at a high temperature. So this is increasing in temperature. Eventually it'll get to the boiling point and at the boiling point it will change from a liquid to a gas and the amount of energy it takes to go from a liquid to a gas is the heat of vaporization. <clears throat> In this lab today we're going to try to find out the heat of fusion, so how much energy it takes to change one mole of ice to one mole of liquid water and also the heat of vaporization, the amount of energy it takes to change one mole of liquid water at 100 degrees Celsius into one mole of water vapor. Uh, we'll do the heat of fusion experiment first. So I have a calorimeter, which is just a simple styrofoam cup. And I'm going to put some warm water into it. It doesn't matter exactly how much water I put, uh, but I will find its exact mass. So I'll put this back on my balance. And it has a mass of 87.39. 87.39 is the initial mass of my warm water. And the temperature of my warm water looks like it's 91.9 degrees Celsius. 91.8 degrees Celsius is the initial temperature of my water. And now I'm going to add some ice to this. So I'll take a handful of ice, a small handful of ice, and I'll add the ice to the water. And I'll stir. And as the ice melts, it's going to be giving its water, its energy to the water, and therefore cooling the water. So the hot water is being cooled by the ice, and the energy that it takes to melt the ice is being supplied by the warm water. So we're going to stir it, and eventually both the ice and the hot water will reach an equilibrium temperature. Looks like all my ice is just about melted, and we're probably almost to the equilibrium. We'll stir it a little bit more. So what's happening here is the, the warm water was cooled down by the ice, the ice was melted and then that melted water will be heated up a little bit and they'll reach an equilibrium temperature which it looks like is 34.3. So 34.3 is the final temperature of both the ice and the uh, warm water. I'm going to take this now and set it on our balance again. When we set it on our balance, it now has a mass of 130.79. 130.79 so you can subtract to find out how much ice was added. We know the original mass of the water, we know the mass after the ice was added, so we can subtract to figure out how much ice was added. And when you're doing your calculations, you're going to see how much heat was lost by the hot water. And to do that, you use delta T, the change in temperature, is the, uh, times the mass, times the specific heat of water, and that's for the water being cooled. And then you're going to set that equal to the amount of energy that was gained by the ice, so that's the energy it took to melt the ice plus to heat the cold water up to the equilibrium temperature. So that's the information you need to calculate the heat of fusion of ice. Now the second part of the experiment is for heat of vaporization. So I'll take a second calorimeter here. I'm going to set up a steam generator. So I'm going to take a Erlenmeyer flask, set it on the hot plate. It has a little bit of water in there. And I'm going to heat that water until it's at the boiling point. Uh, at the top of my Erlenmeyer flask here, I have a stopper, and the stopper is connected to a tube. So what's going to happen here is the water will start to boil. And when the water starts to boil, it will produce water vapor. The water vapor will go up through the tube and out the end. So this is a steam generator. Uh, we need to be pretty careful with this because the steam coming out will be pretty hot. Uh, the experiment here will be pretty similar to with the heat of fusion. We're going to have some water vapor, so this will be our steam, 
and we're going to be putting that steam into some room temperature water. The room temperature water will be heated by the steam, and the steam will be condensed from a gas into a liquid. So let's take a sample of, uh, let's see, so we've got our calorimeter, zero R balance. We're going to take a sample of room temperature water, so a small sample of room temperature water in our calorimeter. We'll put that back on the balance here. And it has a mass of 67.92 grams. 67.92 grams is our mass of water. And now I'll find the starting temperature of the water. This is just tap water. And it looks like its initial temperature is 19.1 degrees Celsius. So what I'll do here in just a second, my water on the hot plate is almost boiling. When that begins to boil, it's going to start to produce steam. And then I'm going to take the steam through this tube and into the water. Um, as the steam comes through this tube and into the water, it's going to condense. And as it condenses, it's going to be adding heat to this room temperature water. And so this water that's initially 19.1 degrees Celsius will be heated up by the steam that's coming through this tube. It's starting to boil. We'll let it boil a little bit more. Okay, and you can see we have a little bit of steam starting to come out of our tube here. And so what we're going to do is take this tube and put it underneath our water. And so now the steam is putting, uh, the steam is going into the water. And you can see little bubbles forming. It's kind of like a, an espresso maker here. The steam from this hot water is going up into the water and it will gradually heat the water as the steam condenses. So we'll stir this around. We had an initial temperature of 19.1 degrees Celsius. And you can see the temperature is already going up as the steam is starting to bubble through and heat this water. We're going to do this until the uh, temperature of this water gets up into the 70s or 80s. And we're going to do that because the amount of steam is, is very small to cause temperature changes. Steam contains a lot of energy. And so we'll let that continue to boil for a little while. We'll let the steam continue to go into the water and heat the water. And you can see the temperature continuing to increase. Uh, at the end, we'll weigh this again, and we'll weigh it again to figure out how much steam was condensed and how much uh, steam has been added to this original mass of water. Okay, so it's continuing to bubble. It's continuing to put steam into our room temperature water, and it's continuing to heat that water. The heat of vaporization of water is the amount of energy it takes to change from a liquid to a gas. Um, here we're actually going the other way. We're changing a gas into a liquid. The amount of energy uh, required is still the same, just with the opposite sign. So it's starting to boil a little more rapidly, produce a little bit more steam. Then you can see the temperature of our water is increasing as this steam is condensed from a gas into a liquid. We're doing this into water because we know the specific heat of water. We know the specific heat of water is 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. And since we know how much energy it takes to increase the temperature of water by one degree Celsius, uh, we can figure out how many joules of energy are involved when the, the steam condenses from a gas into a liquid. So we'll go a little bit longer. We wanted to get it probably up in the 70s before we stop.
that's probably about enough. So I'll pull this out and you can see the steam continuing to come out. You'll see steam being emitted by our steam generator. And that was the steam that was being used to heat our water. So our water has a final temperature of 78.2 degrees Celsius. And I'm going to take it over here, set it on our balance, and find its final mass. Uh, the final mass of the water is now 76.33. 76.33. And so you can subtract the original mass of the water uh, from 76.33 to figure out how much steam was added. And that should be all the information you need in order to calculate the heat of fusion and heat of vaporization of water.